What's going on people, it's ShubyP Baby. Welcome to another video. This is a back testing video. Um, we're gonna be getting quite in depth on, on this. We're currently looking at Aussie dollar. I haven't looked at Australian dollar in a very long time and it looks like there's quite, there's some quite nice, oh, there's some quite, there's some nice price action going on. And I've looked, I've moved us directly to the reversal that's happened most recently. Let's try to find that. So this reversal here, this is where I'm going to be focusing this week here. I want to see our price made the low and how we moved away and the kind of profile it was. We're going to be looking at entries, exits, all the usual stuff we do in our backtesting videos. And yeah, it should be good. Hopefully we can get quite in depth and um, I'm planning on being here for a while. So it's, there's potential. This might be a long one or I'll probably split it into two separate parts. We've got the lo-fi music playing, of course, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm going to drop down to the five minute because that's usually the charts I do my analysis on. But to be honest, we could do the one minute because we have the data available. Let's see. Do we have the data available? We might not. No, we don't. <sighs> I need to get that soon, guys. Right, so we've got the five minute. That's fine. Obviously, we're going to start on Monday. I'm going to be marking everything out. This is Monday, 29th of May. And yeah, we're just going to work our way through order blocks, fair value gaps, looking at ranges, all the usual stuff you see in GBP babies, backtesting videos. But yeah, I hope everyone's good. I want to say hello to all my new subscribers. If this is the first time you're watching a backtesting video, um, this is just a time for you to sit back, relax, and enjoy, man. I think it's, a really, impo it's really important to see ict concepts especially if you're learning his content put into action and understand the things that i'm looking for idealistically so this is sunday opening and i'm going to make it a little bit more transparent and i always have that marked out for the week usually so we're gonna get straight into things oh yeah actually i need to mark out my london sessions so i'm gonna mark out all the london and new york sessions etc and i'll be right back so the orange line delineates the london kill zone london kill zone and then we're gonna have the new york kill zone between the blue lines And finally, we have, well, not finally, actually, we have the London close here. And we have Asia, Asian, the Asian range here. So we're going to start here and we can see our price rides up. And then we have an expansion lower due in New York at 235. They have a breaking market structure here, so I'm going to mark that out. And I'm also going to um, mark out the fact that we took out relative equal highs here and here. So for my buy side, I usually use blue. Oh, yeah, buy side liquidity. And you can see how we ran that true in London. And I'm going to write sweep of relative equal highs. And then you can see how he has lots of back and forth price action. Order blocks and order blocks and order blocks and order blocks. Order, swing high, take out that high and then we break down. This is quite interesting price action to be honest, the way it's stepped stepping up i wonder what level it oh okay it took out the, the buy side here as well so that's what it was going to so there's buy side liquidity there and there's buy side liquidity here as well it's interesting that it went up to that level um yeah So we still got that buy side liquidity and then we have a 
break below market structure. Where's the break in market structure? It would be uh, here. Break off structure, I usually just put BOS. And then I'll just put that in the middle. On the center, black. So a break of structure, let's make that black as well. So once this closes below here, um, I no longer accept, I don't, I no longer expect price to trade above this candle. And you can see that that's what happens. We trade into this fair value gap and we fill it, which is interesting. Um, but you'll notice that we don't fill this fair value gap, but we'll look into that when we get there. So we have, so we have a, we have a bearish fair value gap. <laughs> Bearish high value gap. Um, I'm gonna take off that. Ooh. Can't even see the writing. That's a bearish high value gap. We can trade into that and then we leave price more aggressively, taking out the swing highs here. So I guess that's a break of structure here as well. This is a more confirmed break of market structure, and you'll see that price fails to trade back into this fair value gap as we leave it. That's more this break here is what I'd like to see because um it shows price respect to the fact that we're leaving the range and we should be trading into some kind of lows. Um, but yeah, we'll um, mark that out. It's breaking structure there as well. You know what? I'm going to copy this. So then once price closes below this low, I no longer expect price to go above that candle and it doesn't. Obviously until we turn around, but... Um, I'm talking about on, on the way down into the south side liquidity. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we can look for an entry between this candle and this candle. This candle here, um, although we wicked up, we wicked away, I see this as a fair value gap. I think if we drop to the, if we had the one minute available, there'd be an imbalance in this. And you can see how we wick in and then wick out. And we leave this part open. It also, I think it's also important that we mark out the, to the total range that we're currently trading in, which will be this low to this high. And you'll see that that's at the 50% level. So this is price action we'd expect to see at this level. We'd want to see price trade through the 50% level to the 50% level, trade through it and then find support. It would be this low. Trade through the 50% level and then find uh, resistance on it. And that would confirm uh, the likelihood that we're, like, we're going to trade to the next level. Um, I'll put bearish fair value gap here as well. And now this should act as resistance, which it does. We trade down. I think this is the media. What's it called? I don't know, but it's interesting that we find resistance and then we trade to it here and then we have a big push to the next level down. Yeah, let me just mark out a few more things. We've got a bearish order block that we trade to here. We have an open fair value gap here. So that's just normal fair value gap. And when a, pri when a fair value gap stays open like that, so you see how we trade failed to trade through it, this suggests um, the lower prices Although, yeah, right. It's just lower prices because we left that open and then we do end up trading lower. That's what I was going to say because I, I was thinking, I wonder if, yeah, because this low gets taken and that low gets taken. Oh, just about interesting. I'll go into more detail of that once we get over here and I'll explain what I was saying, what I'm thinking there. But this is what we call a breakaway gap for sure.
Right, so we trade down lower, took out lows here. We took out lows here, here, in fact. So the next level would be here, and that's what we see. And then we close, and then we find resistance again at this level. And we start to tiffle down, and we trade right to the to the Sunday opening and into this bullish order block that started the mood. So I'm going to mark out this bullish order block. sell side liquidity and we have sell side liquidity here as well and we also have well, well I see these as being all stacked but you can see we traded right down to we wick down to this one price traded down to here interesting let's look at that range See, this is the kind of investigation I do, you see. I'm looking at how we stacked here, here, and here, and we traded into this. And I'm just looking at where we traded to exactly. That's quite, that's interesting. So here we have a push up, we break structure, and we also trade through this bearish fair value gap, and we find support at it, again, suggesting higher prices, and we can see us pushing into the breakaway gap. So I'm going to mark that out because this is all, this is just classic reversal uh, behavior. We have a break off structure here. And then we have an inverted fair value gap here. You know what, I don't really want to use this as a fair value gap because I can't actually see it. Although this is a wick, it has this range here has been fairly traded as in downside, upside, was offered and then be left. So more so what I want to bring our attention to is this candle because the way we found support in this area. I wish I could have the one minute on that, but I'm going to leave that open basically is what I'm saying. So this is an inverted order block but what I like to do instead is I'll uh, put the minus slash plus so we trade through it bullishly tra trade through it again price comes down find support price should once we trade through like this price shouldn't come back into it and if it does come back into it we should be looking for buys so we could put an entry down below here we don't reach it here but we do reach it here and where would our stop loss go below here and where would our target be above this high so oh i keep forgetting to put my entries in <laughs> right i'm going to start putting my entries in but yeah so this is a classic pattern i'll say that again so we have a bearish fair value gap we then have a bullish fair value gap uh the fair value gaps created once this candle closes we trade higher we trade back down and we see support being given to this fair value gap we then trade into this breakaway gap, come back down and we trade completely into the fair value gap, filling it. We can buy below here because we've seen it act as a bear, as a bullish uh, fair value gap. So as in it went from bearish to bullish, so it's inverted. So if we put a buy there, we could put a stop loss here, buy here, and then our target would be above these highs. And that's what we see happen. However, the time of day that that's happening, <laughs> between 7 a.m. and 5 a.m. this isn't really ideal trading conditions or time and then when we get over there I'll, I'll start explain why I think price went lower after <sighs> right what am I doing what am I doing right so let's try and put some entries in where would I realistically be entering this break of structure here so that would give me an entry I don't like that that closes in though the fact that we closed this fair value gap in um, I don't think I'd trade that. None of this I don't really see as tradable. Buying at this bullish order block. Then again, this is a Monday and we don't really trade Mondays anyway. Oh, actually, no. This is a sweep of relatively equal highs here. And yeah, okay, I'm forgetting. Cool. Right, so I'm going to put my arrows in now for where I'd like to be buying and selling. 
Now the reason I do this is to train my eye to understand um, environments and, and conditions that I should be trading in. So yeah, I think it's important that you guys do this as well, but you know, it takes time. But if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it properly. Oh. Whoops. Right. So I'd like to think I'd buy there. Where would I let go of my stops? Probably below here. There's a swing low and there's a fair value gap here as well. So my I'd buy back here, as in I'd get out of my position on this candle. Make that blue. I'd be selling from, where would I be selling from? This is technically a buy, but again, it's not in the t in the times in the time range, so I'm not gonna actually use it. This sweep and our relative equal highs and the fail to close this breakaway gap is a good sell. Where to? This low here, where would I put my, where would I put my stop loss? Above this high. So I'm gonna explain why I think it's going on here now. Um, let me just put that here on. It'll be this candle. So when we trade back into this inverted fair value gap, you can see we consolidate and then we trade higher, take out relative equal highs, which are clearly engineered, fail to fill in this breakaway gap, and then price attacks these lows. The reason I think it's okay to attack these lows and not find any resistance at this area, in fact, we trade quite through, we trade through quite aggressively and easily, is because this has already been this area has already been fairly traded both on the downside, upside, downside, upside, downside, upside again, and then downside and then upside again like this range here is just get like it's no longer needs to be traded through but you can see how we get into a tight and tight consolidation as we go as we move into london and this is a monday so i don't really want to speak too much but yeah let's um so i can sell that because that's above relatively equal highs here and the fail to break to fill in the fair value gap Buy side liquidity, wow. It is late guys, it's currently 4.52 a.m. I'm, I'm doing this, so you're gonna have to bear with me here. You'll see that we close below the 50% level of the fair value gap. Okay, what am I doing? Right, that's exactly like that. Cool. And I'm gonna write. Where's my text? From here to like, from here to like all the way, from here until about here, this is all, like this is all uh, price distortion. As in, if we just pretended all this wasn't here and it was just a ch -ch, like it would show on like a line graph, that's just a classic breaking structure, market structure. And I'll show you what I mean in a bit, because I've got a good way of showing you actually. So that's cool, and then we have uh, south side liquidity rest in here. You 
Okay, so we just tap it and probably find support there. Again, creating the illusion of, um, what do you call it? The illusion of support for retail investors. So I'd get out here. This is all during the New York session. Then after that, obviously we've got London close. You could trade London close higher if if you wanted to, I guess. We have a break in structure and stuff, and stuff. But let me just get through all this first. So break or structure there. We also have a fair value gap. This see, this is a perfect example of a breakaway gap. So at this point, so once we get here and we come back up here, if price is going lower, it won't fill in this gap. And you can see we only trade the fifty percent level. We don't even close inside of it and we leave it again. So it's likely, and then that just adds confluence as the reason why this is a breakaway gap, and it's likely we are going to go into these lows here. Obviously, having to withstand all this movement higher is going to be tough. But again, if you have a bearish bias and you have an understanding of where the market is like going, you'd understand that this is simply just manipulation and can be seen as a, a simple retracement. Also, we're retracing back to a breaker swing high, uh, swing high, swing high, swing high, swing low. This will be this basically this will be the breaker because this is a swing low between two swing highs here and here. So that's, that's a swing low. Or even if it was between this high and this high, it'd still be, this is the breaker basically is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna mark that out as well as let's make that yellow and I'm gonna write bre breaker. Oh mitigation. I think it's mitigation. Is it mitigation? I think this is a mitigation block. No, it's a breakaway, but it's a breakaway. It's a, it's a <laughs> <sighs> it's a breaker. And look, you can see how we just wick right to it and then flash away from it very fast. Beautiful. You see, when I'm going through the markets like this, it's it's all like although it's although it's back testing. I can just, I'm starting to notice things more and it's going to become way easier and stand out a lot more to me when I'm obviously in the markets live. And that's, the whole aim is to be not perfect, but to be as probable as possible. And this kind of practice really helps to sharpen my understanding of the markets. You can see we close below it. We also close in this fair value gap and we don't even fill in that, which is interesting. just looking at, I'm just there yeah, I am just looking guys by the way I'm not gone I'm just analyzing this is acting as a rejection block why because every time price trades into it we're seeing price get rejected so let's make that a rejection block one thing about rejection blocks is um, I find that they're quite hard to cool before they form um, But because the way that ICT explains that, like this would be seen as rejection block straight away. Because let me zoom in here. This will this candle here will be seen as rejection block. Why is it a rejection block, Sean? It's a rejection block because here we trade into it and we leave it. So when price comes back into that range, we can expect the same to happen. And you see, we trade bullishly here away from it obviously we break down through it after and that's with the bearish um, bias in mind and we should know that's going to happen because we're respecting the fair, the bearishness that's being built anyway my point is it's easy to see because it forms here but I'm starting to think and wonder would this this low be this high being made before this high is this just acting as a bearish order block before it's formed does that make sense I don't know if that makes sense I'll have to do some investigation with that. <laughs> so you can see our price is respecting these fair value gaps. We have one here and we have one here. And then as soon as we get our first up candle, we touch it and then we leave it aggressively. 
and then we get another breaking structure blah blah blah, blah. but I'm gonna try and stay out of the stay out of the stay stay within the zone so the London kill zone and the New York kill zone how long we've we been going 25 minutes wow I hope you guys have learned something in this I'm gonna make this definitely gonna be a part series so the next one will probably drop on Friday or something but um I don't know how long I'm gonna be here for. It might be two hours. <laughs> so you can see price uh, right before. I think actually it's. I can't remember if if Asian range is seven until midnight or eight p.m. until midnight. I need to rewatch that video. But anyway, you can see we wick down, take out outside liquidity, break a structure here, and we can see we start pushing right up and start pushing into the, these swing, this swing high rest in here, in the Asian range. So I'm going to mark out south side liquidity, buy side liquidity even. I'm going to make that in the middle, and we're going to put it in center. And then we're going to start looking for a break in market structure. At what point do you understand that? What point do you accept that the market is going down? This candle here. So as soon as we, so we can have a break down here, and then as soon as this candle closes below this swing low, um, I'll start looking for anything that will point to low. And I'm expecting the bearish market anyway. I can enter on this candle. Hopefully on the one, I reckon on the one minute there should be some kind of fair value gap between here and here on the one minute trade up and then you can see price aggressively moves lower and eventually went in down creating the low on Tuesday beautiful 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 price action <laughs> how long we went three minutes right I'm gonna try and just do this little fractal in in five minutes so um, and then the rest and then I'll see you in the next video I do want to actually measure something here as well. You can see there's no, this is the five minute chart, but you can see there's no gaps until there's a gap here. Um, and I, any gap, I wouldn't want to see it. The first, any gaps I don't want to see get filled. You can see this one doesn't get filled. We trade through it, but it doesn't close in there, which is nice to see. And then price leaves it further. Uh, this one doesn't even get, try, doesn't even try to reach up there. This price action all from here to here the one minute will likely have the imbalances available for us to want to be get for one for us to be wanted to be getting in that early i do believe that this candle is possible to get in on due to the fact we close here we trade higher into this um this is an implied fair value gap the midpoint of this wick and the midpoint of this wick and you can see we trade into that leave it so i'm going to actually make that an entry i know it's crazy but i haven't seen ice to use this in a while but this is what you call an implied fair value gap when you get the 50 percent of two weeks that are crossing over one candle like that and you'll see our price trades back in trades right into it the only thing is that it actually trades above it and then leaves it um so i'm not entirely sure if it still counts or whatever but i'm going to use it as an as an as an entrance gosh me sure GBP baby. Right, so that's been everything from me, guys. This has been GBP baby. If you um, catch me in the next video, I'll be continuing this. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you soon. Peace.